Hi everyone, my name is Steve. Today we're going to go through depth first search. This is a very classic and useful graph search algorithm. I'm sure you'll encounter them in many of your interviews. And if you deeply understand this problem, you can immediately tell from the surface of the interview problem whether depth first search is a good candidate for the algorithm that you should pick. So we'll go through the basics today. So first, as its name implies, we search as deep in the graph as possible. And when depth first search explores edges out of the most recently discovered vertex, we'll call it V, that has unexplored edges leaving it. And as soon as all these edges have been discovered, and we'll backtrack to explore edges leaving the vertex from which V was discovered initially. So we'll backtrack. This process will continue until we have discovered all of the vertices that are reachable from the original source vertex. And if any undiscovered vertices remain, then depth first search will select one of them as a new source, and it will repeat this search from that source. This means we'll produce a depth first forest instead of a tree. We'll go through that in just a second. And the algorithm repeats this entire process until it has discovered every vertex in this graph. That's the theory of this depth first search in plain text version. Next step, we'll go through what that really means. We'll use a graph to illustrate this first, and then we'll use a real code instead of pseudocode. Similar to last time for when we talked about breadth first search, if you missed that, I'll put a link here just to click that. We'll still use three colors to represent different states. We'll use white to represent its the very initial state. What that means is that we'll color every vertex to white and in the very beginning, just to indicate that this is a brand new vertex that we haven't visited yet. And the second color is gray, which means we have discovered this vertex. We are exploring all of the adjacent vertices that is connected to this vertex. That's what gray means. And black just means we have completely finished. We have exhausted all of the adjacent nodes that are connected to this node. And then we'll mark it as black. We'll use two timestamps. This is something new that we didn't use in breadth first search. First one is UD. D stands for when it's discovered. And UF, F stands for when it's, we have finished traversing all of its adjacent vertices. The lower and upper boundary of these timestamps will be all integers. We'll just assume they are all integers. And the boundary of this will be between one and twice of the number of vertices. So if, say, there are four vertices, the upper bound is going to be eight. We'll see that in just a second. And vertex u is white before u dot d. That means before it's discovered, we mark it gray. It will be white before we mark it as gray. And gray will just means the timestamp is between its discovery time and its finish time. And black will be after u dot f. That's what it means. All right. Suppose we are given such a graph, a, b, c, d, e, f. It is alphabetically horizontally sorted, just for easy reference. Back to the idea of depth first search, we'll just pick one node. You can pick any node. In this case, we're just going to pick a, since that's the beginning of the alphabet. You can pick any one that you want. But if you pick a different one, the, the forest that you're going to form is going to be different. Initially, every single node is white. That's the beginning state. We'll color every single vertex to be white. And then after this, when we discover a node, we'll color it to be gray. We'll start from A. So we'll color A to be gray. And this one, right now, all of these five nodes, they don't have any discovered or finished timestamp. But for this one, we'll start with timestamp one. These timestamps are integers. We'll just simplify that. Beginning from one up to two times number of vertices. So there are six vertices here. So the max bound for the timestamp is going to be 12. The last timestamp that we're going to use to discover the last vertex is going to be 12. That's going to be the finished timestamp of one node in this graph. For this, what I'm going to use is the first integer is the discovery timestamp. The number that comes after that slash is the finished timestamp. That's what the number and the color indicate. We start from A, color it to be gray. So we have discovered this A. Next, we're going to discover what? All of the adjacent vertices that are connected to A. Next one is B. So we discover B. It took us one more time unit. So B's discovery time is two. Then we'll continue to explore. As the definition of depth first search says, we'll continue to explore as deep in the graph as possible. From B, we're not backtracking to A because we have something else. We'll continue to discover it. Next one is E. It takes us one more time unit. So the discovery time of E is three. And then we'll continue to go even deeper, right? We're not backtracking yet. Continue to go even deeper. That is 
D. We discovered D. D. It took us one more time unit. So this discovery time is four. Right now, all of these have been discovered and all of them have been marked gray. Is there anything that is adjacent to this node with D that hasn't been explored yet? Is there any? None. At this moment, we have explored to the deepest level of this possible route. That means we have traversed all of the adjacent nodes. So we'll start backtracking. So we'll mark this one to be black. That means we have visited all of its nodes. And we put five here because five is the finished timestamp of this node. Now we'll continue to backtrack. Next time is six. It took us one more unit, so it's six. We backtrack to here. This is the path that we we started from A, go this way, this way, this way. Now we started to backtrack here to here, right? So now it's six. It's going to take us one more time unit. So it's next time it's seven. So seven is the finish time for B. Continue to backtrack. That is eight. It is the finish time of the node A, of the vertex A. I'm using node and vertex interchangeably in this context. So we have built this depth first tree, but we haven't finished traversing this entire graph. If you recall the definition of depth first search, we'll continue to go through the graph. We'll just pick another node as the starting node, as the source, and continue to repeat this process until we have traversed all of the nodes. So next, we'll pick this one. We discovered C, so we mark it as gray. Next time it's so beginning from eight, next one is nine. So the discovery time of C is nine. And then C goes to, we'll only discover the undiscovered, which means it's white, the color is white. So to see this one, it's also directing to E, but E is black, which means we have completely visited it. Even if it's gray, we don't go there. We only visit the white nodes, right? Which means we have never touched. Next one is F, discovery time is 10. Then there's nothing more to go. So we'll just go back, we finished traversing. So we add a finish timestamp to F. That is 11. We'll continue to backtrack. At this time, we'll continue to backtrack. Now it is 12. Now we have finished traversing through all of the vertices in this given graph. Now let's take a look at the start time and end time. The start time is 1, the very start time of this entire graph. And the finish time is 12. 12 is twice of the number of the vertices, which is 6, which meets this definition. It's between 1 and twice of the number of edges. Again, you see here, we produced a depth first forest. In this graph, there are two depth first trees, one tree, another tree, right? So this graph, after traversing through this entire graph, using depth first search approach, we have produced a depth first forest. In the purpose of this demo, we started from two nodes. One is A, the other is C. And we use the exactly the same process. We'll continue to explore as deep as possible. Now let's think about the time complexity. Suppose the number of edges is E and the number of vertices is the variable V. What will be the time complexity using these two variables? The big O notation V plus E. It's linear to the number of vertices plus, plus number of edges. If this is not clear, we'll go through the real code walkthrough right now. Then you'll completely understand and the time complexity and how depth first search really works. Now let's go there. All right, now I'm in my IntelliJ. I have compiled a simple program to demonstrate how the theory really comes into practice. I have implemented a simple program to imitate exactly what we just went through. So see here, this is my main program. I have created an object called vertex. So where do I define vertex? It's here. This is my vertex class. It has one color. This, this color is an enum, which has only three fields, white, gray, and black. The map to undiscovered, discovered, and finished states. It also has a parent, which we saw in the graph. Every single node has, has at least one parent. And in the produced depth first forest, every single node has always one parent. So we'll use this parent to indicate this vertex parent. Then we use two integers. One is discovery timestamp. That's the initial timestamp when this vertex has been discovered in this traversal. And the second timestamp is finish timestamp. And there's one more field called val, which is just standing for the value of this vertex. In back to the graph, that means A, B, C, D, E, F. This is one constructor. This is a two string. I, I'm using this to print out this entire algorithm before and 
after we call depth first search just to show how that really looks like all right now back to this main program i'm using a tree map to hold all of the all of the connections the edges from one point to another one vertex to another again this is an adjacency list representation i'm instantiating all of these uh, six vertices here using java code and then i put all of them into this graph this is a tree map and the reason i'm using a tree map is because tree map can help you keep the entries sorted in order and i'm implementing a customized comparator i'm using the vel as the comparison key so that all of the entries in this graph in this tree map will be sorted by alphabetical order a b c d e f just for easy tracking then here i'm printing out all of these vertex before i call the depth first search algorithm so here i have a class called depth first search algorithm this is the constructor and this is the algorithm back to the main program then i'll call depth first search right or we'll just call this and then after we call this i print out every single vertex again the juicy part of this entire program is the depth first search algorithm now let's take a look how i mapped the theory into practice how can we do that i created the two fields one is called time which starts at zero i have another field in this class called graph which is a map so when we instantiate such an object of dfs algorithm inject this graph into this field we have one main method in this static class which is just called dfs in the very first what we do is that we initialize every single vertex in this graph to be white that should be the initial state of every vertex before we start dfs algorithm and the parent should be null for every single node after that we'll create a tree set again for easy tracking i'm using a tree set instead of a regular hash set because i'd like to everything sorted in alphabetical order just for easy tracking for the depth first search algorithm we need to go through every single vertex if you recall back in the graph we have to visit every single vertex initially every single one of the vertices is in white color that means none of them has ever been discovered yet the reason we need to put them into a set to go through is that just in case the end result of this depth first search is a forest meaning there are disconnected vertices. If we don't put them into a set, we might miss them. And then this is the main part of this entire algorithm. So for all of these vertices, if the color of the vertex is white, then we'll just DFS visit. This is the recursive algorithm that we use to go through every single vertex. Now let's go here. What is DFS? This is a very simple recursive program. You see these two are highlighted together. That means this one is calling itself. Let's see. The first time when we enter this DFS, we increment timestamp by one. So we assign this one to its this vertex discovery time. And then we color this vertex to be gray. Recall the graph that we just saw for every new vertex if it's white. We'll color it to be gray and assign a discovery timestamp to it. What's after that is we'll go through every single adjacency list connected with this vertex. So we'll get this vertex's adjacency list from this graph tree map. And then for this tree map, we'll just traverse through. Again, this is where the recursion comes into play. We'll check if the color, see here, if the color is white if that is white it's similar to here if the color is white what are we going to do we'll call this recursive function dfs visit so see here we visit this v what is this v this v is every single vertex in this adjacency list of this vertex and before we do that we assign this vertex to be the parent of this one which makes total sense the reason we got to v is because we have access to vertex all right then this function will come into here again at that time if time is one and then at this moment time is going to be incremented time becomes two then the discovery time is going to be two then we cut the b node to be great we continue this then in the end we have visited d right so we'll, what are we going to do that's the end there's nothing else that is white that is connected to four so we'll then we'll just finish so at this point we'll color this vertex to be black that's what happened here we color d to be black and then we increment timestamp and assign the incremented timestamp to be the finish time of this vertex. That's why we have incremented time here and assign this time to be the finish timestamp of this vertex. Then we'll continue to do this for E. Now E is incremented and assign 6 to be the finish timestamp of E. And then 
Timestamp is incremented again. We assign seven to be B's finish time. And again, we, we continue to do this. We increment time to be eight, then assign eight to be one and mark A as black. We have finished traversing everything that is connected with A, directly connected with A. At this point, what are we going to do? We'll continue. At this point, we're back here. So we'll continue a b so b is visited so b is not of color white we're not going to enter this recursive function next one is c so c is white that means we'll call this function so we'll enter c so we'll continue to go through this which marks c is going to be marked as gray increment one and then go to f increment one that's the end 11 12 then we're finished so back to here if this vertex is c that means we have finished traversing c then what's left is d e and f all of these three nodes they are black so none of them will go into this recursive function that means we have finished traversing this entire graph i hope that makes sense to you now we can just quickly run this program and then you'll see what that really means i'll just comment out this now let's run this program so first i'm just comment uh, i'm just printing out everything what each vertex is looking like so see here every color every vertex is completely empty it only has this veil which is a b c d e f i'm using a tree set so that it's in sorted order so that we can it can be easier to track right and this a is mapping to here a is connected to these one b and d right a is mapped to b and d that's what this arrow means a is connected to b and d and this one b is connected to e so see b is connected to e that's that's what this means now let me uncomment this now let's run it run all right so starting dfs dfs finished now you see all of the colors of the six vertices are in black only two of the vertices parents are now which is a and c right makes sense a and c a and c right this is these are the only two nodes who don't have a parent because they are the root of their respective depth first trees the second node it does have a parent what's its parent the parent is a then what's this node this node is b so discovery time is two and seven for b b is two and seven exactly matches okay now let's see the third vertex is C. C discovery and finish time is 9 and 12. 9 and 12 is here. Makes sense. The fourth vertex is, let's see, its parent is what? Is D. No, the parent is not D, but the value of this vertex is D. Value of the vertex is D. Discovery and finish time is 4 and 5, is 4 and 5. I hope that makes sense. And E. E. This is one of D's parents, right? So E is here. Another parent of D is B, right? It's also here. B is also here. B. And also another parent. So D has three parents. Another parent of D is A. A is here. Discover and finish time is 1 and 8. 1 and 8 is here. All right. Let's go through the fifth vertex. The fifth vertex is E. E is, e is here. E. 3 and 6. 3 and 6. And the last vertex is this one, F. F is here, 10 and 11, 10 and 11. And its only parent is C. C is here, C is here. That's the code. Now let's talk about this time complexity. O of V plus E, number of vertices plus the number of edges. Why is that? Because you see here, for every, for all of the vertices, th this one, the number of vertices is V, right? So we go through the number of vertices only once. If it's not Y, we just don't go through we ignore and for here this is going through every single edge for all of the edges only if the next vertices color is white will enter this recursive call if that's not the case we'll just ignore so we will not revisit any vertex or any edges we only backtrack once that's the beauty of depth first search and why the time complexity is big o of v plus e that's the real code walkthrough i have this um, i have this piece of code published on my GitHub. I'll put a link at the description of this video. Feel free to check it out and play around with it. That's it for today's video. I hope this is going to be helpful for you to understand depth first search because it involves recursion and it's a very useful and practical helpful graph search algorithm. It's going to show up quite often in an interview or just helps you understand
computer science basics very helpful. And if that's the case, do me a favor and hit the like button. That's going to help a lot with the YouTube algorithm, and I really appreciate it. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. We'll continue to go through more interesting algorithm and data structure so you don't want to miss out a new video. That's it for today's video. I'll see you guys in the next one.